The science of Derby, the science of Derby, let's learn something new. Hi, and welcome to The Science of Roller Derby with me, Legs. Today we're going to be talking about stance. One of the biggest mistakes when it comes to stance with newer skaters, um, especially if you're working on your stride actually, is you want to go fast or you've seen speed skaters and you get into this position where you're really pitched forward. So your head is forward and it doesn't look that bad from the first look. You've probably seen people skating this way. And let's take a look at what's happening with the weight from the hip up. And so when you're pitched over, the main centers of weight is all our viscera and our lungs and heart and all that stuff in here. So I'm going to replace that with one blob of weight and then there's also your head is a significant source of weight. And we can even go as far as to combine these two weight balls into one just to simplify things. So let's consider this person if they were 100% upright just walking down the street and their weight was right over top of their hips and legs. Um, they're not falling through the earth, obviously. So that means the earth is pushing up against the bottom of their feet to hold them there and it's pushing up with exactly the same force. So every action has an opposite and equal re reaction. In this case, 100 weight, 100 force up from the ground. And of course, your muscles are using exactly the same force to hold your body upright because we're not collapsing down to the ground. So when the body is pitched over here, this weight center is pulling down with exactly the same force. You don't weigh more just because you've leaned over. The ground is pushing up with exactly the same force. So none of that has changed. What's changed here? That mass center has moved away from the part of my body where the ground is able to push up and my legs are able to push up. In other words, my hips. So there's a horizontal displacement between my hips and the center of mass. And now that force is acting on that horizontal displacement, just like a lever, like a wrench or something, kind of pulling down against my hip socket. It's creating a rotation. And that rotation is exactly equal to the weight times the distance, so times that x. So if the weight's 100 units of force by the distance x, we'd say there's a rotation of 100x. This is also called moment or torque. So having my weight forward is creating this torque and pulling my body forward, it makes it want to rotate forward. Now, of course, I don't skate like that, so what I'm doing is I'm counteracting this moment with my back muscles, creating an equal and opposite counter moment, 100x. So let's talk a little bit about how my back muscles generate that counter force in order to counteract that torque forward. And in fact, it's these little muscles in my lower back that are doing a lot of this work. And so if I have to generate 100x units of force, and my back muscles are acting at x over 2, so they're acting at half the distance of the weight, I have to generate a force of 200x with my back muscles. Ow! That's painful! That's a lot of work. Um, so we don't want to do that. It's a horrible idea. There's another major issue with this position. Look at where the head and neck are. This is super dangerous. In roller derby, it's a full contact sport. You never know when someone's going to be coming in from the box unexpectedly. Um, if you're building muscle memory to always be in this position, it's a horrible idea. So I'm going to say categorically, this position is bad. It's going to hurt your back. It's not efficient. It's dangerous. Don't do it. Now let's talk just for a second about the speed skating position. And I'm definitely not saying the speed skating position is bad. If you look at it, this looks a lot different than the pitched over position we looked at first. First of all, the hips are much lower. So the hips are really lower than that center of mass in the chest. Look how far forward the knees are, how bent the knees are. And also speed skates are quite long, whether they're on wheels or ice skates, they're quite long. And this positions where your legs can push off the ground in relation to that center of mass in a, in a much better place. Here's an overlay with that center of mass and you can see already it just feels better. 
And you can put yourself in this position versus that pitched over position with the straighter legs, and you can feel how different it looks. For roller derby, for a full contact sport, I still have a major problem with this position, and that is that the head and neck are in play. So I'm going to say this position is awesome for speed skating and not good for roller derby because of the head and neck situation. Um, if you want to improve your stride, I definitely think it's worth taking speed skating classes, talking to speed skaters, and trying different techniques to see what you can do to improve your stride, but always keep your chest and head up out of the game. All right, so that's two examples of stances that are non-ideal for roller derby. And let's talk about what you want to be doing. If you get into a nice, classic, awesome roller derby stance, it should feel a lot different. And what's good about it? The hips are low, really low, much lower than the chest. The knees are bent and forward. The chest is up, the head is up. You can see what's going on in the game. Now let's add in those weight centers over top. One for the chest and one for the head. Let's combine them to a single weight to make analysis a little bit easier. Now the weight's exactly the same. So it's pushing down through the floor, the floor is pushing back up. That hasn't changed. But what has changed is the distance between the center of weight and the hips is much, much smaller. That means your moment arm or that distance that the torque is gonna to be created on is much smaller, which is great news for your back. So one more time, let's look at that good derby stance and point out the key features. Number one, hips are really low, much lower than the chest. You have the knees bent and forward and your chest is up and your head is up. This is a great roller derby position. So I hope this helped you dig a little bit deeper into the derby stance and why we do it from a physics point of view. I hope that helps improve your stance a little bit. Check out my other stance video, which is going to talk more about the center of mass and how all this plays out for giving and receiving hits, which is going to lead into how we do counter offense, which is crucial for the game and very fun, very physics-y, very scientific. So uh, you definitely want to do your prereqs, so to speak, leading up to there. So thanks a lot for joining me for this stance lesson. I hope it was helpful and see you again really soon. The science of derby, the science of derby, let's learn something new.